Oh, hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, we are live. Uh, hello and welcome to In Between Appointments. Hello. We're uh, genuinely in between appointments here in the Feathers and Florence studio. I'm allowed half an hour and half an hour only in the studio. Otherwise, I mess things up. Uh, so before the next uh, uh, brilliant bride comes into the studio, just uh, about four o'clock, we have half an hour. I'm allowed half an hour to... I do my own thing on the internet, which would you believe that was a thing? So, I, but and I always try and ask questions to somebody uh, more brilliant than I am in the wedding industry. And this week, I have great pleasure in talking to Abby from Orange Ivy Photography. Good afternoon. Hello, thank you. Hello. For me. Hey, not no problem at all. No problem at all. It, it, it's great. Um, and do you know what? I'm going to dive straight in, Abby. First of all, um, I want to know who you are. Where are you from? Where are you now? And what do you do? Okay, so I am Abby. Um, I am from a little village called Botany Sands I grew up yeah. in, mm. um, just 10 minutes away from Lancaster. Uh, and I live in Carnforth now, which is five minutes away from that. So I've not travelled very far. <laughs> no, no, you, you don't travel far. You that that that's where you lie. That's where you live. And oh, it's a beautiful part of the world, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. It's thirty minutes away from the Lake District, so it's perfect for me. Um, thirty minutes away from Windermere. Although I was having this conversation with a couple yesterday hmm. at a wedding, um, wow. and I said. I'm 30 minutes away from the Lake District, from Windermere, but actually it took me an hour and a half to get to where they were. And it just shows how massive the Lake District is, that massive place that we work in. Um, but yeah, I, um, I'm a photographer. I'm a wedding photographer. I do do some lifestyle photography as well, but it's mostly weddings. Um, I have been doing it seriously now for mm. about a year. Um and I, I did photography before that, but never really took the wedding industry serious. Um, I was always a little bit scared of it and okay. a little bit scared to jump in and, and go for it. And then, um, I don't know, I just saw a bit of a window uh, this time last year and thought, you know what, I could do this. So I had a rebrand, changed my name, um, changed the whole look of my business and started to take it seriously as a business. Um, and then here I am a year later. So go on, take, take us back then. Is it something you always had that skill uh, to to see something? Because it's not just about clicking a button. It's about angles and where sunlight is and all of that sort of stuff. Have you always had that skill from when you first started? We always thinking, oh, eventually I'm going to end up in this creative profession. Um, I've always been creative. Like my parents will tell you as a kid, I just used to want to draw and colour and stick and cut and mm. I wanted to do all of that all the time. Um, and my mum always says the only bit of homework that I would actually do was my art homework. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I used to love uh, being creative. And then my, it was my friend actually mm. taking it right back to when I was a teenager. My friend... Um, she was just she had an iPhone and she kept taking photos of things and I was like that looks really good like how mm. did you do that mm. so then I got a little bit into it and we used to like go on walks and take photos of really pointless stuff like we'd take photos of just a flower in somebody's garden and then we'd go and we we lived uh near Morecambe Bay Beach and there's a beach in Bolton Sands so we used to wander down to there go and take photos of the sunset and the wavy grass and all really pointless stuff but we were just playing around um, and then I got really into it and I asked for a camera for my birthday and it was one of those like really cheap little digital yeah, ones yeah. where it goes cheap and the lens <laughs> and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but I had that for a little while and then I was still into it after a couple of years so um, I then asked my parents for a proper camera um, and I started off with like a Canon 700D or something like that mm. um, and a um carried on with it and I don't know it I went to college with it because when when I finished school um I didn't really know what I wanted to do but I knew that yeah. I was still this and I really enjoyed it so I went and studied photography at college um and then when I left there I really enjoyed that but when I mm. left there just wasn't quite brave enough to go for it so I went and worked in a school um, right. and I still work with children now part-time nice. um, 
so I still enjoy that. But I just got bored doing just schoolwork, and I, yeah, yeah. I missed that creativity because I wasn't doing it anymore. I was just like I wanted to be creating stuff. I wanted to be dreaming up things, and you know, so. Yeah, I, I started getting back into it a little bit. And then that led me to doing lifestyle shoots and family shoots, that sort of thing. Um, and then to last year when I was like, you know what, let's let's do it. So have you always been, you say you've always been creative. Where does that creativity come from? Is it from your parents or have you just kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, through through friends or through environment? Where's the, Where's that creativity come from? I'm interested in that. My parents say that it comes from my granddad who... He's no longer with us. He's he died uh, about twelve years ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, they say it came from him. He was into photography. He used to work in a, in a camera shop in Lancaster. Okay. Um, and he had a bit of an eye for stuff like that. Whereas, like my parents aren't very creative. They won't mind me saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> my dad enough. works in the in the construction industry, and my mum's a school receptionist. So you know they've always had quite standard jobs, not creative mm-hmm. at all. But then. My brother is quite creative as well. He um, is an engineer, and I know there's a lot of creativity goes into that. And he yeah. has like he has big, wild, and wacky ideas. My brother, so we've both sort of got a little bit of it. Um, and they always say it came from my granddad. Very good. I mean, I, I can. I'm going to go back to one of your other points about um, that maybe hesitancy of of entering into the the wedding market because. I see your stuff now, and 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 it and it's so good. It's like you you you've never not been in the industry. So I suppose talk to us about that hesitancy of, of because your stuff is so good. It's good at lifestyle stuff. It's good at wedding stuff. So why that hesitancy? What was it about the industry? You thought actually maybe I'm I'm not quite ready for it. And now all of a sudden you are. Oh, thank you. That was very nice. Um, I think it was more the business side of it that scared mm. me. I think the creativity I could do, but there was a lot of pressure with weddings. You know, yeah. if, if you're still experimenting a little bit and you miss something, that's it gone. That's the one time yeah. that you can capture it. So I think that pressure scared me a lot at first. Um, and then the whole running of the business, like dealing with clients. I, I remember, like now, I'm so excited when I get an email or an inquiry yeah. off a client. But at first, I just used to get so scared. Like, mm. I used to see an email come in and my heart used to go like this. And I used to think, oh, what are they saying? How do I reply to it? And, like, I was thinking, what if it's an issue? How do I deal with that? And I'd never I'd never experienced that before. So that was really scary. Um, I think it was probably more the business side. But then mm. I, a little shout out to uh, Bridget Ibbotson, um, because Bridget. Bridget Ibbotson Photography, she helped me massively and still is helping me so um I went and second shot with her on a wedding and then I've been accompanying accompanying her on weddings ever since um and just watching her run a wedding day we were having this conversation yesterday because I was with her yesterday watching her manage a wedding day and talk to the couple and um manage groups and how she goes about managing it all that just yeah. helped me massive. like I've learned practically from watching her and after doing a few like I've done something like 15 weddings with her now but after doing a few weddings with her I just it felt easier it felt yeah. like I was all right on my own I've got this I've got the experience I, I can do this and so now like I feel so much more confident love that Love that. What what's so what's your what's your favorite thing then about what why 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 weddings? Uh and what 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 really gets you going about weddings, you know, because you could you, you, with your talent you could do anything. So what why weddings? Um so I think I realized this a little while ago at a wedding. Um I was sat there on my break having my meal. And I was just looking, there was like guests coming in and out and chatting and the bride and groom would come in and out. And I just thought, oh my gosh, this couple, this is the most special, like one of the most special days of their entire life. And I'm here getting to watch it all and be part of it all. And I think it just made me feel so privileged getting to be a part of that. And then, I don't know, it's just this, 
every wedding is different and every couple is different and every single time that they say their vows and they have their first kiss I get goosebumps every time and I well up at the at the song when they walk in and I well up at the speeches and I think I've always been quite a romantic I um I met my husband when I was 14 and we've been together ever since um and I'm definitely the romantic one. <laughs> um, so I think I've always been, I've always loved romance and the idea of love and love stories. Yeah, and yeah I really, really enjoy getting to know each and every one, uh, each and every love story as I go. It's so special and everyone's so different, like I say. Brilliant. Let's go with some top tips then. There'll be, there'll be, there'll be uh, couples watching this whether it's live now uh, on Facebook or, or LinkedIn, or they'll be watching on, on Catch Up or what, some of the clips that we do, and they won't know where to start with their photography. Uh, they'll be, you know, weighing it up. So give us some some kind of Abbey top tips about photography on their, on their wedding day that you've seen so far in the industry. Yeah. So it's so important that you find somebody with your style, with a okay. style that you like. So go through their Instagram, their website, everything like that. Make sure that that is the style that you love. And then if you inquire with them, have a chat with them. That might just be through emails. Mm -hmm. It might be through a Zoom call. It might be through a coffee. Um, photographers will probably send you over a brochure as well. That will tell you. I know in my brochure I tell couples how I work and what I do in the wedding day. Um, and a little bit about me as well. And that will then tell you if I'm your type of person. Yeah, of course. Because, like, I'm there the full day. You need to get along with me. Yeah. You need to be a good match. And I think social media is a massive part of that mm. because then if they're following me, they'll see my stories. Like, before, I posted about how I found yet another grey hair. You know, like, just <laughs> little tiny yeah, things yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that that you get to know me as a person and then they feel familiar with me and then they feel comfortable having me there on that special day. So the massive thing is make sure that person is your type of person um, and then make sure it's it's your style. Um, there's so many different styles out there as well. And, like, I, I get a lot of work off recommendations too. So, mm. you know, if if you've had friends and then they might recommend a photographer make sure they're your style not just that couple's style you know what i mean yeah oh yeah uh, talking about styles uh, can you put into words what your style is uh for for people who, who are hurriedly probably going to be searching you on 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 social mm -hmm. media now but can you describe it because there are so many different varied styles yeah yeah definitely so i am quite um I've got quite a romantic style, like we were saying before. Yeah. Um, I am quite, I always describe it as warm-hearted. So, okay. like, warm-hearted, atmospheric. I like a bit of moody light. I like a bit of window light. Um, I'm not bright and airy. Mm. Um, but then that fluctuates as well due to, like, weather. So, if yeah. you get married in the winter, I'm going to be darker because every yeah. photographer is get married in the middle of summer it's going to be brighter so that is something that factors in but my style is like warm romantic and atmospheric I would say all right all right and then does that in terms of places that you've you've shot already or let, let, I'll tell you what let's go with places that you want to shoot you know the people yeah. watching this and going oh yeah we're 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 having our, our wedding it's 2024 and we're getting it we're getting married in x place where is, is that dream place for you? you think oh i really really want to do a shoot there yeah there are so many places oh, right. okay fair enough well <laughs> list them off then <laughs> <laughs> there are so many places i'd love to go um i would love to shoot in italy absolutely love that yeah. would be that would be the dream if i could shoot a tuscan wedding oh my gosh that would be absolutely amazing or rome we went to rome for our honeymoon i love it there um that would be incredible but in terms of like closer to home, um, I've been second shooting at a couple of venues at low, uh, a couple of weddings at Low Hall now, Low Hall Lakes. 
So to book my own wedding at Low Hall would be amazing. I've not yeah. shot one of my own weddings there yet. Um, I do really love that place. Um, there's so many. Uh, there's so many that I can think of that not particular ones are coming to my head. But I'm going to one, actually, uh, All right. next week called Le Petit Chateau. And where's that? Le... Yeah, very good French there. Very good French. Le Petit Chateau. Um, <laughs> where's that? Uh, that's uh, over in Northumberland Way. So oh. that I'm really excited about because that's a lovely little... Um, I've got quite a boho mm. style um, and it's a lovely little chateau house type yeah. building. Really, really quirky and really individual. Perfect for a boho wedding. It looks really lovely. So I'm excited about shooting there. I'm, I'm assuming then that you're you're getting quite booked up for next year already then and uh, people watching this going oh crumbs we, we're getting married in i know april next year have we left it too late uh what would you say to that what's your next year look like it's getting that way now actually which i'm so excited about um i've got about 16 weddings booked in wow. next year now um which in the grand scheme of things thinking about a whole year it doesn't sound like a lot but when that's 16 weekends it actually yeah, takes up quite a bit of time um and I'm only taking one wedding a weekend next year yeah. so that then fills time quicker um I think I've got one or two weekend dates per month now um I was adding it up the other day and I think we're roughly on that winter months are a little bit quieter so if you're planning a winter wedding there's yeah. more likely to be um availability but yeah I do still have weekend dates left um but they are they're going quite quick the inquiries are coming in thick and fast which i'm very excited about well yeah of course i mean uh oh gosh i've got two questions in my head what well, i'm going to come back to uh i'll tell you what but i mean because your social media is 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 a, a huge part of, of of your business if you can't show off your skills on instagram and facebook then you're doing something wrong but mm -hmm. um is it a place that people just get in touch with you through through Instagram? That must be a really good sort of generator of opportunities for you. Yeah, definitely. I don't limit inquiries just to my emails or, or website or anything. And I know that, that is quite an effective way to do it so that we're not missing messages. But mm. I just find it so – I want it to be so quick and easy for people to get in touch with me. If they want to pop me an Instagram message about their wedding and – that's absolutely fine. I don't need them to email me. I will get yeah. back back to them on there because it's quick and it's simple. And I want, like, it says in my brochure that I want, I want everything to be as simple and chilled out for that couple as possible because yeah. I'm a chilled out person. I'm not. I, I I like to be chilled out. I like to be laid back. Um, my husband will probably tell you different, but <laughs> yeah, well. I do like that. So I want it to be chilled out for the couple. And so if that means ease of just messaging me on instagram that's fine like get in touch mm. with me and i will get in touch I, i'll get in touch back as soon as i can and that usually tends to be within a couple of hours um but yeah it's such a brilliant platform for that because yeah. it might be like they've seen a story of mine that i've put on and you just reply to the story it's just mega mega quick and and it's it's easy for people and you were, you were talking about being uh, sort of booked up uh, for next year. And, and I'm assuming like probably most people in this industry, this year has been a little bit of, of madness because everyone's been filling the boots from the, the stuff that was cancelled for the last two years. Uh, but of course, what, what I think that people don't realise is the amount of time that you need to spend on editing and sifting through the thousands of images that you take through the day. So talk to us about then that process of you you will take thousands through the day and how do you sift through them and what do you then present to the end couple do you give them four thousand pictures uh, or is it a selection what does that look like yeah so i don't think people do realize this that it takes such a long time mm. to go through them all so first thing is my backup process as well which i should mention because yeah i do absolutely I, yeah because i i like desperately want to make sure those images are safe for any reason at all so um I back up on the day as soon as I get home I back up the photos so I'll take like I did a wedding the other day and I took 2400 photos um so I'll back up those photos onto two hard drives 
then um, I put the cards and the hard drives into a fireproof safe in my nice. house, just in case. Um, so they're all nice and safe. And then um, over the next day, probably the day after, I will go through, so I within 48 hours, I go through the photos and I pick out between 10 and 20, hmm. 15, 20, that sort of amount, um, photos to send as a preview. So I'll edit yeah. those little just that little cluster of photos, send those over so that if the bride and groom want to use those photos to announce that they've just got married or anything like yeah. that, or, um, they can use those. Um, and then within four to six weeks, I will get that gallery edited. Um, you have to call through it all. So I yeah. delete the ones that aren't right, keep all the other ones, um, then go through and edit them. Then you've got to make these fine little touches. So you'll go through and edit them to start with. And then you'll spot something that's really annoying and, oh, you'll yeah. it up and you'll change it. And those little, like, say if in group photos, grandma's not looking, grandma's got a grump on and she's looking over there. So then you'll have to swap her face with a yeah. different photo or things like that, you know. Um, so there's lots of little tweaks that you have to make after. Um, and then they go into a online gallery, uh, which is they have a password and a download pin and everything like that. Um, so it comes through on an email. They can then view their gallery, um, all private to them, um, and download the photos. There's usually, with a full day, a big full day wedding, um, usually about 700. Wow. If it was a really busy wedding. So this depends on like how much there is going on on the wedding yeah. day as well. Because if it's quite a simple wedding and there's it's it's quite laid back and there's not a lot going on or if it's a small wedding and there's not a lot of guests then there's not going to be a lot of photos not a lot of photos there's not going to be as many photos whereas if it's a really full jam-packed wedding and there's all sorts going on then you're going to end up with more photos um second shooters are also a big thing so if you're looking for more photos and more angles I can only be in one place at once Um, I only have one set of eyes so a second shooter can be that second set of eyes and they can go and get, while I'm doing group photos, they can go and get some photos of your guests mixing and having a drink and that sort of thing. And they we can also get um, both partners getting ready in the morning. Um, so that then adds and builds up your gallery. Um, but yeah. What's your favourite, favourite bit of a ceremony then, or the day? What's your, what's your, 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 you know what, that's, this, this is my time. I know exactly what's kind of going to be happening. What's your favourite bit to, to shoot of the actual day? Um, so I, like I said before, I always get goosebumps yeah. on that first kiss. It's just every single time when they say you are now husband and wife or you're now wife and wife, whatever it is, I honestly, goosebumps every time. I get so excited. But I think my favourite bit to shoot is um the portraits because okay. that's when I take the the couple off by themselves and I don't take them off for long I'll only take them for like 20 minutes yeah um might do that once or twice during a day depending on light and things like that um but literally about 20 minutes at a time so that it's really non-interruptive and all of that um but I love doing those because that's when you get creative that's when yeah. you get, and it's it's when you see the couple chilling and relaxing and having that special bit of time together is lovely um but like we can just make I think that's when my style comes through because you can yeah. make those really lovely warm romantic creative shots in that time so that's definitely I like get really excited about that that time a two-part question now uh and it's, it's going to be my last couple of questions for you uh, the first is, where does the name come from? And second of all, what does the future look like? Okay. So the name Orange Ivy comes from, it took me a long time thinking of what I wanted to call it. And I wanted it to, wanted it to be something different that people would remember. Um, so formerly I was picturesque photography. And I remember one lady saying to me, um, what was what was your uh, photography business called again? She said, I remember that it had a cue in it, but I couldn't remember <laughs> what it was. I was like, oh, so that's good. People are remembering. <laughs> um, so I wanted it to be something individual. Um, and I wanted to make sure that there's nobody else out there with that name as well. Yeah. 
Um, so orange is my favorite color and because um, it's really nice and warm, which yeah. then reflects the style of my work. Um, and Ivy, because I really got into um, podcasts um, okay. about photography business, creative business and all of that. Um, and as I was listening to them and as I was going over the ideas for my business and the opportunities that I had and what I could be doing, it felt like my imagination with it and my goals were just growing and growing. They were just getting more and more. And yeah. that was Ivy to me. That was the I Ivy. They were all growing and it was spreading and it was getting bigger and taking over. Um, and it felt more, more achievable, you yeah. know. Um, so then Orange Ivy. And that um, leads on to the future then, doesn't it? Growing and doing more. It does, definitely. The Ivy keeps growing. Um <laughs> Yeah, I am really excited about the future. I think, uh, so this year I booked about, in the end, I think I booked about 15 or 16 weddings because I had a few last minute ones. My aim was 10. My goal was 10. Right. Um, so I, I was really excited that I got those last minute bookings really? and I got over that. Um, and then next year, my goal is to double it. So my goal is 20 no. and I'm only about four away from that at the moment. So um, yeah. it's it's going to keep building and I'm hoping to keep doing that. I'm hoping each year I'm going to make my goal a little bit bigger. Um, and like, I'm never going to stop learning with it either. Like, no, I, of course. it's just going to keep going and there's always going to be new things I'm going to learn and new people that I shoot with and suppliers that I shoot with that teach me new things and new couples with new ideas. Um, but yeah, I want to keep growing it. I want to go full time. So um reduce massively my yeah. hours and do the part time job. Um and make this my main my main job. Um and I want to eventually and I, I always say this is a really long term goal because I'm not looking at doing this in the next couple of years. Um but I'd really like to start up a wedding magazine. Interesting. Um, or a blog. Okay. All right. <laughs> I really like, I've always liked writing and like I say, I've always been creative. So I think I've, um, I think I can, I can do that pretty well, creative writing. So I'd, I'd love to just like bring all these different ideas together and yeah. help to support suppliers and write about them and see all these different love stories. So I think eventually I'd like to do that, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure how far in the future that will be. Well, dream it and believe it. That's what I say. Dream, believe, achieve. Uh, we, we, we know it's happened. We, we'll, it will happen with your ambition. Um, so last, very last question, because I'm going to get thrown out of this studio in, in about three minutes. Um, where yes. can people go to find out more about you? Yes. So uh, I've got my website, www.orangeivyphotography.com. Um, I am on Instagram, at Orange Ivy Photography. Um, I'm also on Facebook, but Instagram is where you'll find me most. Um, and if you want to email me, it's abby, A-B-I, at orangeivyphotography.com. Love that. Abby, um, I am going to say thank you. What I am going to say is we play um, uh, this uh, interview out with a video um, normally. We're going to do the same today just to uh, show off the talents of, of what we do. But actually this week it's uh, your talents as well in some ways because it is the video that was shot at Fall to Not. Yeah. Uh, that we play out so we're playing out so if you want to know kind of who was involved in the absolute organizing of this shoot of the, the video that you're just about to see it was all your idea abby so uh that's, so that's this shoot, there, that shoot you will see that dress <laughs> on this next video yeah. um so, I mean, thank you so, so much for spending half an hour with us. We genuinely appreciate it. Uh, if anybody who's watching this has missed it, you've caught up now and you want to see more of it, um, it will be on our YouTube. It'll be on a podcast on Spotify. Uh, tomorrow it gets uploaded and we'll put clips out all next week on LinkedIn and uh, Facebook where we, we're popular on LinkedIn, would you believe? Uh, Abby, thank you very, very much for joining me. I genuinely appreciate it. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you so much for having me. It's been lovely. Thank you. Have a good day. See you soon, everybody. And we'll play you out with a video. Bye.
Today, you are holding the hands of your best friend, young and strong and full of love for you, as you promise to love each other forever. These are the hands that will love you. These are the hands that will hold you and comfort you through the years. These are the hands that will give you encouragement and support. These are the hands that you will each work with, create with, and use to build your life together. Congratulations, you're now married. You may kiss. Yeah.